hello 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 welcome in guys how's everyone doing hi bonk how are you just making sure my music's good and i think it is i think it is hi cookie happy thursday to you as well bonk yeah sammy was showing me and telling me about that the restaurant or sorry resort that your GF is working at now looks amazing and hey Jay Selby welcome in we got a follow from maps be more thank you for that first thing and yeah they have eggs at the resort oh that's got to be so much fun leftmost cat hello how are you doing sloth true sensitivity yes happy Thursday guys it's good to be back my Thursday, well, I always kind of feel like it's my Monday. So I always feel like a little bit sleepy, a little bit just like working into the week. But it's nice though that, bless you. There's the token Sammy sneeze. It's nice though. <laughs> oh, blessed that we can take our Thursday and kind of work into the rest of the weekend that way. Hi, Scarlett. How are you doing? I got some, guys, I went a little bit fancy. I made us some matcha lattes this morning. That's our next tea that we're using up. Anyone else drink matcha ever? It's so yummy. Love the flavor of it. Just did a little bit of maple syrup and some cream in there. So delish. Okay, today's stream, we're going to be doing some grilling up of fish. This fish was caught by Zach. I'm just going to grab it so I can show you guys what we're working with. I think it's over here. Possibly not. Oh, there it is. It's like, where did Sammy put it when he went to bed? Here it is. And it looks super nice. So coho. This is actually a smaller, let's say, variety or version of coho is they can get pretty big, like good 20 pounders for sure. But I was like, oh, this is going to be like more similar to almost trout in the way that it is so small. But coho salmon is still nice and fatty. It doesn't have like a super fishy taste to it. And yeah, I thought it would be perfect size for us to stuff with herbs and lemon, season it up, and then we'll tie it up and then we'll grill it outside over charcoal later. I think it's gonna be so, so good. And then to go with that, we'll do up, I think just some like buttered, buttered baby potatoes. And then we're doing a salad from the Maddie Matheson cookbook that we read on Sunday. We're gonna do the greens with the green olive dressing. So that's one of the recipes we have linked today. Let's see if I can find it in this book from last time. But I did find a recipe link when he was on Rachel Ray. And they made this salad together and it just looks so good. It's like looks so bright and fresh and then the variety of olives that we use is so nice and buttery. G, green olive dressing, 126. Have you guys had a good week so far though? We have been like, we have had a pretty busy week, I would say, but it felt good. Like Tuesday, we saw lots of people. We went for breakfast with my grandparents downtown. And then we ended up meeting up with a fellow streamer couple, which was really fun too. You don't know, Leftmost, the application of smoke or fire to food has never resulted in anything good. Yeah, it could never be good, right? <laughs> okay, so here's this. This is where I took inspiration. The green olive dressing is kind of how it will look. And then we got some really nice, just like head lettuce. And I think I'll maybe throw some tomato in there or something like that. But like I said, that recipe, I do have a link for it on our recipe command so that's there as well as 
The recipe for the hot cross buns. I chose a sourdough one. So actually the first thing that we got to do on stream is feed Goldilocks. I just took her out a little while ago from the fridge. Hello, Lazy. How are you doing? Have I ever used or heard of mountain ash? Yeah, I've heard of the tree mountain ash. I've never used it to smoke though. Is that a thing? Yeah, interested in the dressing. It looks so delish. So yeah, I do know it left most as like the tree that has berries on it, exactly. Hi Scoots, how are you doing? Welcome in. And so far we have a very busy Saturday this week. We have eight pizzas on order plus ours, so 10 pizzas total and that's where we ended up capping it for the reason that, well, we had to actually order some more Lloyd pans. So now we're gonna have 10 pans total, Sam? Yeah. 10 Lloyd pans total. Sammy's like, well, the Lloyd pans cost more than what the pizzas cost, so we'll have to do one more pizza day before we leave to make sure that the pans are paid for. <laughs> but I think they'll be a really good investment. Two more pizza days? Okay, two more pizza days. And then that's the other thing is the pans are good for not only just pizza, they're very versatile. And we were measuring out in the Traeger that we can get six, six pizzas in there at one time. Pretty cool. You're just offered a whole tree for wood, but not sure if it'll work for smoking. Probably secondary fuel source. I'm not too sure about smoking with mountain ash, but you never know. He meaning to make wine or jelly from the berries. You can do that? I did not know about that. I always just thought that the birdies ate the berries. Two truckloads of maple? Insane. That's crazy. You're getting set up or what? Okay. Goldilocks, look at the bubbles in the in the middle there. She's she's coming back to life. So we'll do a full feed. And then this should be good to go in the next couple of hours. So what we do is if you've never done a starter before, so I usually feed the same amount that's here. So maybe a little more than half of this filled with the lukewarm water and then we top it up with flour and basically make like a flour water paste to mix into there to feed the starter. She's tacking. <laughs> yeah, that's how I grew up as well, Lethmos. It's like mountain ash, the berries are poisonous. You don't eat it. But now people are saying some other stuff. I'm intrigued. It's getting warmer there. It's actually not like super, super warm here yet. I think you guys are gonna have spring maybe before us. Also, maple, oak, and fruit trees are almost impossible to get hands on. I think that's a, in a lot of provinces now, Lazy. Because when we first started smoking, we used to get our wood chunks from Ontario, and then that guy got, went out of business, and yeah, it's actually pretty hard to source wood these days. Oh, yeah. Wood. The wood? Should have never came to BC. Uh oh. Because of the reason why Ontario stuff can't come out here is because of the bugs inside and it'll wreck the trees. Yeah. Yeah, I learned that afterwards. Well, he's the one that was shipping it out I, there. I can't get. I can't get. Nothing ships out of Ontario out here. Oh, okay. So he was doing it illegally. <laughs> Illegal. Maybe that's why you stopped. Yeah. Ontario is thriving right now. People are giving away whole trees. You just checked the other day. So I don't know if you could hear Sam in the background, but he said that the wood should not go out of the province. <laughs> Maybe that's why the guy stopped doing what he was doing. When we first start mixing this, it's always so messy. And notice how I'm mixing it with a fork, because I feel like that breaks up the... Whoa. 
the big pieces of the flour, the lumps. <laughs> I have to say, guys, whenever I start like a Thursday stream, I always feel like I don't know how I want to talk. I'm always searching for words. It's like, okay, I haven't talked in a few days. Back to it. Sounds like people might use it to smoke trout. Oh, the mountain ash. I could see that. I think we got to look back to uh, like find out what the indigenous used to do and then use that. Okay, we're getting there. And it is very important when we feed the starter that there is no lumps in the food because that will affect the starter. No lumps at all. So I just kind of keep adding more and more flour until this is pretty thick. Most people do this by weight, but I honestly just eyeball it. <laughs> just be one with the starter, guys. And I will say she now has a pretty like astringent smell. Which means she should have a pretty good sourdough flavor, too. Graceful little cookies, hello, how are you? She does have a nice sour flavor, though. Or yeah, she does. We tasted it in the last buns that I made, or the bread. Almost there. I don't think I'm going to add any more flour after this. It's looking nice and thick. And then we're just mixing it until it's like smooth. Okay, I think that's good. I can put this just to the side for now because we'll need it later. Wipe up this flour. <laughs> yeah, Scarlet. One with the starter. Is that why Kate's so sour sometimes? Sometimes, Scarlett, I think so. I didn't say it. Hey, Zinc, how are you doing today? Okay, now we do a pour. And she's definitely gonna, definitely probably gonna sploot over as soon as she gets excited here. But I'll try and keep all of that when she starts to find her way out of this container. Bubble on up. Ellie's birthday today. Oh man. Wonder if he's gonna be streaming. We should go give him a, a raid later. He's streaming right now. A birthday raid for the hunger service? Yeah. Oh man. Okay, now we mix this in. Two Goldilocks, making sure to get all the way down to the bottom. Nice and smooth. Also wanted to ask if anyone did a little view on our newest YouTube upload there the other day. We finally got the second part to our bacon series done, which was awesome. So first video is all how to cure it and prep your pork bellies to make bacon. And then the second video is like rinsing and then showing how you smoke it and finish it off. It was a really fun one. It looks really good, Cookie. We, I know we say this every time that it is the best batch, but this one was actually the best. Seriously delish. And yeah, we have a couple of people actually coming today. So I don't know, Sam, if you want to do a couple packages up right away here. Oh yeah. For people coming to pick up the bacon. All right, now that we fed Goldilocks, just gonna put her back there. Pretty warm spot to start out. And now we can make up a little prep list for ourselves. Nice, Graceful, just working away and watching. I love it, lurking and working. 
Where did I get my apron from? This apron is handmade by one of my great friends in Vancouver. He owns the company Search and Rescue Denim, so I'll just post the link here. Oh, thanks, Bonk. Bonk will just post the link there for you to this uh, site. <laughs> and if you are interested in it, I also get a 15% off code for you guys, so you can use the code COOKWITHKATE at checkout. And every so often they also do different sales on this site too. And I will also say if you follow them on Instagram and Facebook, they also do a lot of apron giveaways as well. Yeah, it's automatic, Bonk's like, tink. <laughs> Thank you very much, Bonk. And the nice thing about these aprons, you can choose whatever fabric you want. You can choose how you want your straps, where you want your pockets, so many things. And you can also get it embroidered if you want. No bad things to say about that company, that's for sure. No. And if you have any questions, feel free to ask away. All right, first things first. Thing today, well, now that we fed our starter, thing about that is we're just gonna wait for it to become like active until we are able to mix up the dough for the hot cross bun. So that's hot what we're waiting hours. on now. Like I said, it'll be a couple hours. So probably once we're done the salmon and taste that plate up, then we'll make up the hot cross bun dough and it will proof overnight slowly in the fridge and we'll ball them all up tomorrow morning. I agree with you, Bob. If I was over at the computer, I would have done the same thing. <laughs> just, Sammy's up. It's just second nature. How many pounds do you need? I think Paul's getting two and Joan's getting one. Okay. Yeah, we had our friend message us at 10 a.m. yesterday. I had just got up at 9. He's like, guys, can I come grab my bacon? Uh, I'm like, Paul, please. There's the bacon. Yeah, there it is. And this is not the batch from the video. This is another different batch. So, so good. Okay, first things first today, I think we should... Maybe make the green olive dressing. I know that the salmon stuff is not gonna take us very long to do at all. Get our salad things, and then we'll stuff our salmon. Then we'll do our little bit of potato stuff. Then we should be cooking our salmon. Potatoes will hot hold for at least half an hour, I'm gonna say. So salad, G olive dress as well as maybe I'll sneak some tomato into there for us can't use too much though because we need to save some tomatoes for Saturday because we're doing a cucumber tomato salad to go with the pizzas and we had a few orders of those salad green olive dressing tomato and then just our greens will wash up and then like I said after that our baby potatoes yeah, you need to do one more pizza day, or two more pizza days, and you pay for all the pans. Because the Lloyd pans cost, what, $40 each? Or more? 50 each. The Lloyd pans cost $50 each? That makes sense. And if we're charging $25 per pizza, well then you gotta make two pizzas in the Lloyd pan for it to pay for itself. Just, just to pay for the Just pan. to pay for it. You need another yeah. one to pay for all the And then you still need another one to pay for the ingredients so and do, somehow make money. So the next three months that we're here, you have to do a pizza day every month. Pizza day once a month, Sammy says? That's it. I think we can do this, guys. Yeah. I think we can do this. Okay, for the baby potatoes, I'm thinking we'll just slice them in half, do a quick boil on the stove top, and then while they're still warm, we'll dress them with maybe some butter, maybe some garlic oil. I like to do a bit of white wine vinegar in there for acidity. Other than that, we can also take some suggestions if you guys have any. Kind of like a warm potato salad, French style. Butter and vin, and then for our salmon, so we'll have to take it out of the package that it's in. We will dry it off, season. So you can do salt and pepper, you can do a special type of herb rub that you have laying around, whatever you desire. But I know that for sure we'll do parsley, dill, and lemon. 
in the middle of the salmon and then we'll tie it up get it prepped up for the grill and the salmon's gonna be grilled skin side so we're gonna sandwich the salmon fillets together with the stuff inside the herbs and the lemon so that we can just grill it on each side of the skin and then when it's done we should be able to just peel the skin off open it up take out this stuff from inside and serve it up like that hi mama how are you doing yeah we're doing good over here the sun is actually shining today it's been like a pretty nice week swilliams mickey great to see you guys too you love a good warm potato salad me too and i really like it with the baby potatoes because i find if you dress it while it's still warm it'll soak it all up like look at these yeah these like those bellies the pork bellies that we got for the last batch of bacon we made so, so thick like that is probably over two inches thick for the bacon pieces what i have in my hand is, is a pound of bacon holy Ten slices. Ten slices of that so is one pound. Each one of those slices is 50 grams. Insane. So two ounces of bacon per slice. Delish. What are you having for <laughs> dinner today, mama? And hi, Torino. Some nice meat, yeah, for sure. Yeah, it's a good mix. We usually, when we pack the pound, it's like half a pound of the fatty side and half a pound of the leaner side. So if you ever come to where you're at and you need bacon, just let us know ahead of time and I'll make sure it's curing by the time I get there. Then it <laughs> yeah. And take it off. Boom. Not ashamed to say it, but I'd go all homo for Sammy's bacon. There you have it. You shouldn't be ashamed, Torino. You shouldn't. All right. So we went over what to do for the salad. We went over what we're gonna do for the baby potatoes on the plate and how we're gonna prep our salmon. Obviously after it's tied, then we're gonna grill it up. I think total time over charcoal for the package, maybe about 15 to 20 minutes because the fillets aren't that thick. So you gotta think about that too. When we are at Edmonton, I have no problem delivering it to your daughter in Red Deer. Torino. I will. I'll, I'll bring bacon to her, no problem. Yeah. So she can bring it to you. You got cheesy mash, delish, mama. Pork link sausage and baked beans. Nothing as exciting that I make. Come on, I would definitely eat that plate. It doesn't have to be exciting. It just has to be delicious. Okay, last thing on the list: hot cross buns. Who loves that stuff? Who loves hot cross buns? around Easter time. I mean, I don't really celebrate Easter too much anymore, but I was raised that way and I'll definitely partake in the tasty foods. <laughs> Speaking of salmon and jerky, could you make salmon jerky? Yes, Torino. But we're pretty picky about the fish that we eat and also serve to our friends. So it would, it would be maybe like a one time of the year sort of thing when it's salmon season, right? And we do a bunch of it and do it that way, but we're not gonna be buying salmon from the store to make that because the salmon in the store is not good. <laughs> I will guarantee you a halibut here before we leave for fish and chips. Mmm. For a weekend. A halibut? I'm in. Yeah, you agree? Me too. All right, let's get our recipe for today. And I think I might buy another freezer to have ready at your brother's place in Edmonton. To so have it cold. We want to have all our, I want to fill up that freezer full of fish. Yeah. <laughs> so, <laughs> I'll come down here just to buy tuna. I know. Yeah, the DCW Fishing, the family that we bought most of the fish from last year, they've got a whole website set up for themselves. They're even doing a giveaway. They're doing a couple hundred dollars worth of gift cards to start the season. And yeah, it's awesome to see that they're, they've also grown since the pandemic. Don't mind the noise, it's just Sam vacuum sealing the bacon. I have to. Okay, I am so happy to see that as soon as I scrolled down on the olive dressing recipe, they just did it in the blender. Yes. Perfect. Yes. Love it. 
so we'll definitely do this. What, what do they say? This simple, super tasty dressing is easy to make in a blender and the perfect finish for good green leaf lettuce such as jam. Hello, Smelton Paz Haz, how have you been? Maddie says, this is my favorite salad dressing of all time and it's made by my mother-in-law, Carol. I love the simplicity of it, the olive dressing on green leaf lettuce, that's it. The very first time I went to my future wife's house for dinner, her mom served this salad and it was perfect. I'm a guy who hates salads. Not because of the vegetables, but because no one knows how to make a proper salad. Yeah. Salad should be good lettuce with good light dressing, not every vegetable in the world covered in poppy seed dressing and granola or something. I'm in. Okay, let's get everything out for this and we'll get the blender as well. So we need pitted cherignola olives. This is a specific variety of green olive that is nowhere near as strong in flavor as like the canned sort of green olive. Do we have a jar? I have the garlic stuffed ones. Is this what we switched out then, Sama? Must have been. That's okay too, unless it's in the other fridge. I thought you bought another jar of the cast. I mean, garlic stuffed green olives, higher quality ones are not bad either, but not when I see that there's something floating in the brine. You haven't even had them yet. <laughs> I know. Uh, I guess what? Mm. We must have eaten it? Mm. Here, I'll check the other fridge, but either way, we're okay. I know I always have two types of olives in the house at all times. One Kalamata, one style of green. It's okay, it just has to get taken off. Are you okay dealing with this? I can't show chat what's going on in the olive jar right now. Burmese salads are the best. What does that entail? Crunchy, tart, salty, a little sweet. Yes, so Castro Villano, Cherignola, the nice big green olives. They do not have pimento in them either. Very important here. But I'm seeing that the way that they made this dressing on Rachel Ray, they totally used the little green olives with pimento in them and just threw it in the blender. So to each their own. But I will say the Cherignola or Castro Villanos, they do have less of the olive strong flavor. So choose what works for you. Okay, we need garlic, green onion, lemon, olive oil. Got that right here, some white vinegar, very simple. Also white vinegar is the least expensive type of vinegar. Thank you. Okay, there we go. Of course, of course, Leftmost, you drop that link up. I'll go grab a big handful of parsley because we need a bit in the dressing as well. Lemon, use this up, that, our garlic, and then instead of shallot, I'm gonna use some red onion. in the house is not looking good guys it's not usually the case with my ingredients tea leaf salad whoa romaine a tea leaf dressing I need to see what this is whole fermented tea leaves where would you find something like that 
Where would you find something like that? A fridge or a pantry purge? I just did it this week though. Bonk, like earlier. And it, everything was looking good, but like this, I just picked this red onion out of the bag and it looks like that on the bottom already. You know, you just pick something up and it looks great on the one side and then underneath it's like a whole new world. Yeah. <laughs> okay, there's a bit of vegetable oil in here as well. So they must do a half and half with the olive oil to vegetable oil so it's not too, too strong in flavor. Salt and pepper. I'll go clip a nice bunch of parsley for us from outside. A few places sell it online. Burma Superstar and SF run by the recipe creator sells the dressing. That's super cool. Are you saying in San Francisco that's SF? Hold tight. Going out into the construction zone. Parsley is looking so good. Perfect, perfect. I'm back. Yeah, did I walk into a blast? <laughs> kind of how it sounds. As soon as I open the door, look at this nice bunch. Super fresh. I'll just give it a rinse. Quick rinse. There are a couple of Burmese restaurants there in Portland that make a tea leaf salad as well. Cool. Yeah, I'm intrigued by that. What does the tea leaf taste like? I think I'm gonna put that into a salad spinner. Quite wet. Oh. <clears throat> bacon strips. That's rough. Sammy's packed the bacon up. put all this stuff in, make up our green olive dressing, see what we think, and then we'll wash up our greens, so we'll leave this out, and we'll do our fish up. Come on in. All you can communicate about it is it's just umami and kind of grassy. Hey, it totally makes sense. Like that's what I assumed it would taste like, but I had to ask just in case there was something a bit different that I didn't know about. Okay, I'm just uh, putting our Goldilocks into a bowl here, just in case she ends up kind of splooting over and I'm not paying attention. All right, how much of this are we gonna make? This says it serves four, sounds good to me. So we need one cup of pitted Good quality green olives. These ones are garlic stuff, so we might have a bit extra garlic flavor going on. I think there's still one weird one here in there that I see. 
It honestly doesn't make sense though that there was like a little bit of fuzzy mold on the side of the jar because we're always good with how like the utensils that we put in and stuff. Unless the only thing I can think is that like one of the pieces of garlic clove stuffed in the olive went bad. Has anyone else had that happen before? I'm also just gonna taste one and see you guys before I even mix this up. If I have to, we're gonna do Kalamata olive dressing. <laughs> and Sammy's like, that's okay too. I did all the other ones though. Tastes good to me. Oh, oh, you would know right away. Oh yeah. As soon as you put the olive in your mouth, that is not good. Probably gonna end up transferring these to a different jar afterwards, though. It was because the two were floating above the, the water. Seriously? Yeah, that's why. Wow. Okay, one cup, we'll just eyeball this. They weren't floating, they were completely attached to the olives. Oh, okay. I will say, like, at this point, the garlic in the olive is not super garlicky anymore. It's more just there for, like, crunch. In seven years, you've only made me sick once with shitty scallops. That wasn't really your fault, so... <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> ah! I guess if that happens to you, if you grab it and then you drop it back in by accident... You're making yourself hungry, yeah. <laughs> Here, I'll just watch you cook and then I'll get even hungrier. Exactly. <laughs> this is definitely gonna be the most uh, relaxed day of the week. Other than Sunday when we finish off the rest of the Maddie book. Friday, Saturday, we're gonna be busy. Your notes can tell you a lot about your ingredients that you're using. Let's just say that. Okay, for the parsley's here, I noticed that I did pick a couple sprigs that weren't as nice, so I think I'll pick these ones. They have a little bit of yellow on the top, but that's not to say that they're not still flavorful. And I do that and that. And then the rest of this we'll save for stuffing into the salmon. So we'll just pick the parsley leaves off of the stem. Whoa, in Vancouver? Maybe we'll have to check it out one day. A maze house. Yeah, we've not been back to Vancouver in a while. But we'll be passing through in a few months from now. <laughs> it's funny, we're already like trying to, or starting to plan what what we wanna do when we uh, make our way back to Alberta. Okay, a couple cloves of garlic. Remember when it's fresh, don't have to use as much because the flavor is much more strong. Probably do that little amount. Grab our knife. Give that a smash so it's easier to peel. And yeah, blender dressings are my absolute favorite. They're just so easy. Throw everything in the blender and it'll do all the hard work for you. Definitely check it out. Okay, I will leftmost. And yeah, thank you for telling me about it. I would have never known about 
anything like that. A solid revelation for you. Although there's some big words. So I'll have to take your word for it. I go the garlic sprout that can be bitter, especially in like a fresh scenario. Don't want any bitter dressing here. Okay, let's uh, get into our red onion. It's quite soft. I don't know if it's uh, gone, gone bad all the way through, but let's check it out. Nope. Okay, so it was just on that one end there. Whoa, you can tell the outer skin there as well. It's already starting to break down. I hate when onions are super slippery like that. It's terrifying. Okay, now, what did they say? One shallot? One shallot diced. So I'm gonna just cut off a bit of the red onion. Size of a shallot and toss that in there done. Now I'm going to rinse my knife and also wash, wash where we just had that onion so it doesn't stain the board purple because it's already trying to. Same way that purple cabbage does it. Yeah, slippery onions are terrifying. <laughs> Weeku! Tabatai promised he was live and that was a lie, so now you're here out of spite. Well, thanks, Weeku. <laughs> what happened, Graham? <laughs> Hi, Vune. How are you doing? Welcome in. Okay. One lemon. I'll do a bit of zest from this half and then we'll juice it up. If there's much to even zest off of this part. Well, it adds such nice brightness to the salad as well. And I would say like one whole lemon zested, that would be quite strong in flavor. So maybe don't go all that way. Like half a lemon I think would be more than enough. Oh, you finished this song, Vune? I don't think Sam's uh, heard it. Smells so fresh. Mm. Okay, white vinegar. Oh, you sent him something else. <laughs> Viewing is all the juice you need in your life. I love it. Okay, three tablespoons of white vin. Something like that. Noms, BB bubs. How are you doing? Right before I started stream, I had the pleasure of viewing your salmon plate. I think it was on Instagram. It looked super yum, the poached salmon. It's like the lemon butter sauce, deadly. I was like, oh, I'm doing salmon as well. Looks healthy, yeah, that too. Exactly, squirrel. All right, half a cup of extra virgin olive oil and also half a cup of canola oil. So equal parts olive oil and vegetable oil. Pesto, we're actually making a green olive salad dressing from Maddie Matheson, a Canadian chef, quite famous. It's in his cookbook, but we also have a recipe link from when he was on Rachel Ray. And yeah, gotta love it because everything is done in the blender. It was good? Nice, dude. I have no doubt that it was good. Let's start with that. A little sprinkle of salt and pepper. 
Douglas, thank you for those hundred biddies going towards our food truck fund. That is much appreciated and welcome in. Why you never try stuff like this, squirrel? Why not? Nice pinch of black pep. Trying out the random menu generator to plan out the week. Is that like an online thing, BB Bubs? Just like found a random menu generator and that's what you guys are cooking on stream. Okay, so we know that olives are in a brine so they can be a bit salty, so don't overdo it with the salt the first round. Is this it? Is this it? Olive, garlic, ooh, forgot the little bit of scallion. Some green onion. Whew, these are big ones. Let's take this one out to use. Just a random group of categories you put together and then rolled dice to see what items would make up the menu. I love that, dude. What a fun way to just like do something a bit different. Especially if you have been getting a bit sick of making menus for the week. Okay, just gonna wash this up. Make sure there's no extra dirt on there. Chop through that a couple times and toss it in the blender as well. I think that was the only thing we were missing. Let's check it out. Scallion, lemon, olive oil, shallot, parsley, vinegar, canola oil, salt and pepper, and then lettuce. Aw, oh, man, squirrel, you were so close. But now you're so far. Okay, I'm just gonna go over to the blender. Seems like we want this to be a bit chunky, so don't go high, high speed. Just trying to kind of blitz this up. Without taking the time of doing it with our knife. Stop. It looks good. That looks really good now. And yeah, I think that's the totally the consistency that we're looking for. Oh, Douglas wants me to drink. I'll have a sip of tea for sure. Thank you. Oh, that is that is good too, BB Bubs. Making a menu with stuff that you already have in the house. Very, very good idea. All right, let's give this a taste. See what we're working with here. Looks very nice though. I think the olives help to emulsify everything together. Mmm. That's really yummy, guys. Honestly, don't think I'm gonna add anything else to it. Like it's perfect acidity and perfect amount of oil in there that it's not just like overpowering your palate. The red onion flavor and the garlic is not overpowering where that's all you taste. And it has a really nice texture from the olives being blitzed up. It's like got a bit of chew. And Dust Pirate, how are you doing today, man? Welcome in. Okay, I'll have one more taste. Make sure I'm like 100% with it. Yeah, that's super yum. Nothing else. How easy was that? You'll try and make a dressing like that? I think if you like olives, definitely for you. 
I'm hoping that this is gonna fit in this jar for us. That was just perfect. Just gotta get a spatula so we can scrape it all out of there. You love olives? Yeah, me too. I think we could also potentially add some sort of spice to this as well. Like a little bit of chili fresh could be really good in here. Cut through the fatty olive. But yeah, that was one of the easiest dressings I've made in a while. And somehow we just ended up making the perfect amount for my little dressing jar. Just gonna give that blender a rinse so it's not olived forever. Yeah, spice in there, BB Bubs, would be deadly. Or I guess you could always add a few pepperoncini into the salad. But yeah, there you go. Green olive dressing. That's how easy that is. Gonna just pop that into the fridge and then we can grab our lettuce. We'll wash that up and chop it, get it into a bowl. He says green leaf, so we get some nice green leaf. And yeah, you know it must be springtime again when you start to crave salad. I don't really crave salad in the winter time. As soon as it starts to get warmer out, my body's like, we need this. quite rare for a recipe like that to just be like perfectly seasoned on the first try so we can say that that's a great recipe it's actually made properly put this vinegar away All right, next. Drain that water out. Give this a little rinse out. get back into it. Something Wong, thank you for the follow. Welcome in. I think we'll just wash all of this up for ourselves. Sam and myself, we're gonna have a big salad day today. How perfect does that head of lettuce look? Okay, so the first thing I always do before we even start cutting into this is just kind of give it a look over. We can see there's a few spots that need some love here. I usually pick that off before I even start chopping into it. I'm not super picky though with the lettuce being like a bit rusted like that. Maybe this part I'll just cut off a touch. It's like gone a bit browned. And then I'll show you guys how to cut the lettuce into bite-sized pieces, but leaving the head whole. It's one of my faves. Favorite little tricks. Okay. So 
So grab your chef's knife. And we're gonna keep this in its whole form. And what we're gonna do, I'll also trim this part off. Doesn't look too good anymore. Is just make a few cuts. Just kind of open that leaf up. So one on an angle there. And usually I space them out about one inch apart. One there. And down here, all the way through. There. Probably two on this side. Because this one leaf is quite wide. And then maybe one more down that way. And then, yeah, I kind of just go back and forth. This is quite a large or wide head of lettuce, so doing three cuts like that keeps everything pretty even and bite size. I find it so much easier to cut your lettuce like this than to take all of the leaves off and try and do it another way. And then we're just left with a little bit of core at the end and there you go that's something that i learned working on veg station at one of the last restaurants i was in we had to wash like a lot of greens and stuff all the time and it would just take forever so i figured out how to do like greens even like kale and stuff you can do this way just takes so much less time and yeah, if you find any like bigger pieces that you still wanna break down, you can cut them or just tear them apart. But I think bottom line is if you just don't wanna feel like a rabbit when we're eating the salad. Make it easy to eat. Don't leave the lettuce pieces massive where you're like trying to stuff a huge forkful into your face. I think I'll, I'll be able to wash this all together in there. So pop that in your salad spinner basket. It'll run nice cold water over it. Spin out all of the water so that our dressing can stick onto it afterwards. So there's that. Thank you for the follow as well. Welcome in. Okay, that looks good. Not that there was really anything we could see that had to be washed off, but you never know. Might be a sneaky bug in between some layers. Away we go. I'll show you guys how much uh, liquid probably do one more spin but that's how much water was in there and if you leave all that water on the lettuce your dressing is just gonna run off water creates a barrier and the oil will never be able to adhere yep there's still even a bit more Crazy, hey, Quimby? And these salad spinners are not expensive. $15, $20 maybe. But if you're someone that eats like greens and lettuce and stuff like that, they are so, so handy. And if you have a garden too. There's even been times where I like wash some carrots and then spin the water off of them in there. <laughs> okay, I'm gonna grab a couple of tomatoes and then... I think I'll just pile this into a plate for us. 
I'm gonna get it pre-plated. Actually, no. I'll, I'll plate it on the plate. So what I'm gonna do is we'll just leave this packed in the salad spinner if you have room for it in the fridge. Otherwise, you could transfer it to a bowl, etc. But I'm all about making less dishes. Three tomatoes for us. More than enough. Doom 4114. Thank you for the follow as well. Welcome in. Wash up the tomatoes. Give those a little pat dry. And then I think we'll start by just coring them. So we'll take out where they came off of the stem. Just run your paring knife on an angle in a circle. And that takes that out without wasting much. maybe six nice little wedges of tomato I think that'll go really good with that olive dressing cucumber would also be good on there I don't know what else though like Maddie said this is something to keep simple as long as you have good lettuce and a good homemade dressing you don't need to pile on so many other things. Was that a Cuisinart brand spinner? Yes. Yes, it was. El Tomato. CBD, how are you doing? Great to see you today, fellow Canadian. All right, all of the things for our salad are complete. Now we can move on to the potatoes. Get our baby potatoes cut up into a pot for boiling. Then we just have to dress them after they're cooked. Ah, yeah, that's a really good one too. Something is extra virgin olive oil and just a good balsamic vinegar. Very simple indeed. And also really good with tomatoes. Just got home, finally now you're eating. Ooh, what are you eating? What are you munching on? You find it easy to accidentally go overboard with recipes. You have to learn to let things speak for themselves. Yeah, yeah, and that's something that we've been reading through in the Maddie book. It's like learning to hold back sometimes is better. <laughs> You're lazy and got a spicy chicken from Wendy's. There's nothing wrong with that, dude. I mean, as long as you don't do it every day, right? But I think you you're better than that. You know, you know better. Those are still full chicken breasts. They're good. Yeah, see, Sammy's got your back. And he's like, those are delish. Okay. We got the baby potatoes. Finish off this big. They were starting to sprout last time we used them, so we'll take care of them. They're a bit bigger too. Only the reds left in there. So much plastic. Always. Will I even need more? I think that's actually enough for Sam and myself. You don't want any extra potatoes. Okay. That's lots. Okay, we'll take our peeler. 
our handy bandy veg peeler, this guy. And then a lot of people don't know, if I get this to focus, that this part is really good for like digging out the eyes of the potatoes if you need to. But usually I find that they just like rub off really easily without you actually having to dig into them. So let's do that first. And then I think we will quarter these ones, cut them down just a little bit more. And that way that also opens up some surface area, like the potato flesh, not just the skin. And the flesh will absorb whatever we dress it with after it's cooked. I don't know why, but like salmon, potatoes, and salad is one of my favorite plates to make. And it doesn't take that long either. As much effort as you wanna put into it, we could simplify it and just bake everything in the oven. But we're gonna grill it today because the weather's actually super nice out. Put all of those over and then we'll get rid of all of this discard first. And I always like to cook baby potatoes with the skin on. It's so nice and thin and there's lots of good nutrients in there, so no reason to get rid of that. So now we can go over these one more time and if there's just any blemishes or anything like that that, the, that we wanna get rid of, we can now. The potatoes come up to boil quicker. Is skin on mashed potato a thing? Yeah, it is. Yes, it is, but it depends on the type of potato you use, CBD. So the type of potato has to have nice thin skin, like a russet is not good at all, but like a nice red potato or a Yukon gold, something like that, where the skin is nice and thin and cooks down, it's really good. That's one of my favorite ways to have mashed potato, but yeah, you don't see it everywhere. And to each their own, for sure. Some people don't like that texture of the skin and like it more just like smooth mashed potato. Okay, so we're gonna cut these into quarters now. So down the long way and then in half. And we're just gonna boil these until they're tender. Make sure we season the water so they're not bland. Into the pot. You cut your baby potatoes the same way, Bonk. I just love them. And they just kind of pile up so nice on the plate when they're cooked like that too. So now, super important when we cover this with water, there's like maybe two layers of potato in this. So we're only covering the potato. We're not filling up the pot with water. And very important that it is cold water that we start with. We're not pouring hot water onto the potatoes. And hello, Squigs, how are you doing? Welcome in. So just enough water to cover and kind of press them down in one nice even layer. Then we'll bring our salt over and season that up. And that's good to go. And I would say cook time on those, 
usually take about 20, about 20 minutes to bring them up to a boil and then cook them through. Remember, the smaller that you cut something, the quicker it's gonna cook. And then all I do is pop a lid onto that and just place it onto the stove top so it's ready to go. All right. So our list so far, salad and greens, check. Green olive dressing, check. Tomato, check. Baby potatoes, check. Only thing that we need for those is a little bit of butter, I said, and some white wine vinegar, and I was eyeing up our, our green onions. I think a bit of that sliced up and then tossed onto the potato after they're cooked would be really good. So we'll do our butter cubes now and basically get everything for the potatoes ready so that when they're cooked, we just have to mix some stuff into the pot. Because at that time, we're still gonna be focusing on the salmon as well and getting it grilled up outside. I'll do one more here. Where's this other sneaky? What is this one? There we go. Had to see what was cooking today. Yeah, there's always something cooking. Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. Cut off the root end there. And well, that piece of the green onion, at least the bottom part's not looking so good. So we'll trim it up. And then I always just peel off whatever is like super stringy and then we'll give it a wash. bottom part of the green onion is like very slimy kind of this one looks good though that one looks good so we'll just wash that up they're just yellow potatoes CBD that will work. If you wanna do the yellow potatoes with a skin on mash, by all means, that will be no problem for you. But like I said, if it was a russet, I would not recommend that. Russets have like quite thick skin on them. All right, now that we have our green onion, we'll just thinly slice them up for, I guess we can say our garnish. A lot of people also like to roast their baby potatoes. Just keep slicing. a little container for that the butter will just leave in in the paper but we can cube it up now get it ready to go and yeah as soon as I'm done chopping onion on my wooden board I always wipe it up right away the flavor doesn't penetrate fully really soak in I don't like russets for mash, even without the skin. No, me neither, dude. Russets only have like a few good uses. They're definitely my uh, lower end potato of choice. Yeah, something about the texture. It's like kind of grainy, right? 
Okay, that's a perfect amount of butter for our potatoes. Let's say like three tablespoons worth and it's unsalted. So now I'm just gonna cube it up smaller so that when we go to mix it into the potatoes, it'll melt really easily. But we can leave this out so it kind of comes up to room temp. We'll be cooking those potatoes relatively quickly. There you go. Why not salted? Simply so we can control the amount of salt that we season with. It's a chef thing, Zinc. Is like the thing with salted butter is we don't actually know how much salt is in that butter. And so if I already season the water for the potatoes and then I'm using salted butter and then I add even more salt onto them after, like it could end up being really salty, right? So that's why like bottom line, every restaurant, you don't get salted butter ever. It's always unsalted so that you can control your salt levels in everything you do. Let's say especially in baking, especially in baking. And then the other thing I always think about is like, what kind of salt are they using in the butter? Cause they don't have to specify. So it could be like the cheapest variety of salt ever. And that could make your food taste weird. So butter's over there, green onions into the fridge. And I'll just grab our bottle of white wine vinegar out for the potatoes later. So this is the one that I often use. Oh yeah, Sammy. You ever had like boiled potatoes with butter and then your mom put like some tailor fix on after to season it? Do you think that would be weird? It wouldn't be weird? Okay, I thought that would be nice. Has like some kind of vegetable flavor. So what this is, is basically like a vegetable bouillon base. This little seasoning that I'm talking about used a lot in Germany so Sam's mom gave us a bunch and it's super good but yeah the way that it looks to me is like a powdered vegetable stock base so there's salt in it lots of good flavor and I think I'll use that after the potatoes are cooked to just give the final season <laughs> Thank God you asked you're gonna buy unsalted from now on the other funny thing is for some odd reason Unsalted butter actually costs more than salted butter It's like well, you're not even like You're doing less stuff to it, but it costs more like it doesn't really make sense, right? I'll just show you guys what this looks like In the container so that's what it looks like I can pour a bit out as well yeah, there's like, look at that. There's like full on vegetable pieces in there. And then it's all just kind of brought together with salt. It's super yum though. And we even use the base to make like salad dressings with. Just give a bit a try. It's like a good, a good fresh vegetable flavor. Like one of the first flavors I just tasted in there was some celery. Yeah, exactly. It looks like powdered veggie stock, but it tastes better than the ones that we get here. Let's just say that. Okay, next up is our salmon. We'll get this out of the packaging. She's a real beaut. Maybe we'll dress it up on a sheet pan. G Hef, thank you for the follow. Welcome in. Yeah, maybe that, that makes total sense. Yeah, you're getting more butter when it's not salted, right? Because they're already adding stuff into it. Makes sense. Hi, John Leung. How are you doing? Okay, guys, I'm just going to take a really quick bathroom break while we're at this point, kind of in between a task. I don't want to start anything and then have to go. So hold tight. It'll be like 30 seconds.
Okay, I'm here. I'm back. John the Young's all worked up. What's happening? What's going on, man? Thanks, G Hef. Okay, let's get this out of the bag. See what we're working with. I feel like the music I'm playing today is like more relaxing than usual. <laughs> And we gotta open it up. So it's two pieces sandwiched together. And I also did this so that the flesh of the fish stayed very fresh. Oh, look at that color. Beautiful. This is gonna be so nice, done up on the Mini Max outside. So it's already been deboned. You can tell by the color of the coho, like it's quite a dark, fleshed fish there's not a ton of fat in the coho fillets compared to like a chinook or spring salmon for sure and then we can also look at the thickness of this fillet it's not gonna take that long to cook either so a couple minutes on each side once we have it stuffed with everything and away we go so i think one of the first things we should do here is probably season the flesh and then we can start stuffing it with everything. So I'm just gonna wash my hands up. over there so we have I already went and picked a nice bunch of parsley outside from the garden and we washed it up so we got that so I typically go parsley dill and lemon to stuff my salmon if anyone has any other recommendations by all means feel free to share and I pick all three of those because I know that they complement each other as well. But yeah, salmon and dill is a, a hard combo to beat, that's for sure. Holy, look at this herb that they stuffed in there. You can see though that you're paying more for the weight of the stem than actual herbs. Just saying. We use that one since it's not looking the best and probably the rest of that. And then I'm just uh, thinking right now because this is only gonna add a certain amount of dill flavor. I think I'm gonna chop this up or this, there we go. And we'll put it in with our green onion for the potatoes. Cause I love dilly baby potatoes as well be so perfect sounds good Zink well I'm glad we were able to teach you something new today and I hope you have a great day at work as well now I just have to grab one lemon and we'll slice that up and away we go Probably only use half of the lemon as well. Definitely want to cut off the one end. We do nice, nice thin slices. 
and I sandwiched the lemon slices in between the herbs because, well, you know that acid can actually start to cook things delicate like fish. So we don't want to put the lemon slices right against the filet. And one other thing I'm going to do real quick is let's just take some of the tough stem out of these fresh herbs that we don't need because we don't have a ton of room to stuff everything in there either. That's way less to deal with. Even take care of that one. Okay, same thing with the parsley. And we might not even need all of this. So probably take that out. And then it's okay if we have like the delicate top stems, but we just don't want the really thick internal stems. Way less to deal with. <laughs> Mish, how are you doing? Great to see you today. I hope you've had a good week so far. Okay, there we go. The trio. The trio, if you will. And we can bring this back over. And I think also, because it's not super fatty, I think I'm gonna do just a touch of olive oil in there. And that will, I think, also help the herbs from sticking a lot to the flesh on the inside. So we'll rub this up. You can do a pretty healthy amount. Good, you're very good. You just finished eating Greek meatloaf, yum. That sounds nice. Did you make that yourself? I'll let the oil go just on the sheet pan. Get it onto the fish. Oh, I felt a little bit of pin bones in there. But honestly, this is so delicate that I'm not even gonna attempt to take them out. There's just a little line right here. But we'll just have to remember that for later when we eat it. Yum. Greek meatloaf served with roasted potatoes and a spinach salad. <laughs> it's just like a day to serve proteins with potatoes and salad, hey? <laughs> that sounds really good though. Kind of your Greek meatloaf idea maybe reminds me a bit of like a shawarma or a donair they are called here in Canada. Danada. How many are we cooking for? It's just us today, Mish. Just Sam and myself, and then a little bit later on stream when our starter is all happy back here, if, if we even get there. We'll see how long she takes to feed up today. But yeah, we'll be making a batch of hot cross buns for the people tomorrow. And then we have either one or two picking up tomorrow, but ready for this, Saturday. Eight pizzas going out, plus ours. So 10 pizzas total going down Saturday already this week. The most we've ever done is six. So I'm very excited. It is a pizza party. We even had to order extra pans, which the pans actually cost more than the pizza. <laughs> Sam's like, at first he was like, maybe we should cap it. So we only have like the six pizzas to make, but I was like, I don't want to. Like, I want to see how many we can make. Now we know, and that wasn't even everyone that could potentially order. So yeah, potentially we could have up to like 15 pizzas. But the nice thing about that is we figured out is in the Traeger, we could fit six pans at a time. So really easy rotation that way. Pretty sure a pizza wouldn't survive being shipped to Denmark. Well, I have seen people like basically par cook pizza mish and then vacuum seal it and send it to somebody. And then all they have to do is like reheat it through because it's only been par cooked. Apparently that works. 
Apparently that works because everything just like vacuum seals onto the top of the pizza, right? Maybe even in helps the toppings adhere better. And thank you, Kame, for the 189 bitties. Gotta even out that food truck fund. <laughs> Thanks, Kame. And yeah, hi, Care Bear Cares. How are you today? Okay, so just a nice little sprinkling of pepper. Not going too crazy with it because these fillets aren't too thick. And then we'll do a nice sprinkling of salt as well. Once again, don't go crazy. Fillets are not super thick. There we go. And now, why don't we make the bed of parsley first? This is one of my favorite things to do. It takes a bit more effort, obviously, than just like throwing a piece of fish into the oven to bake. But it looks nice. Kind of feels like we're creating some art when we do this. And it also does infuse the fish with good flavor. You're doing good, Care Bear? Just waiting for the kids to get out of school? Oh, your salmon on Discord? Yes, I did. Yeah, the one that you were asking us for some recommendations on. It looked really good and I'm happy that it turned out. So thank you for posting that there. Cause yeah, I'm serious when I say that I love to see that stuff. Well, how perfect were those lemon slices? <laughs> and now we top it with the dill to protect the other side. And now we can think. Do we want to just tie this with some butcher's twine? Or we also have the option of packing it in foil and maybe creating a bit more steam throughout the fish. But the other thing with the foil is we can't really see how things are cooking. So it's not my favorite for fish because it's really easy to overcook it that way. You can't see exactly what's going on on the inside. I'm just gonna quickly take a photo for myself because this looks really nice here. Scoots, how's everyone? So far, so good. The week's been like quite busy. Tuesday was a really fun day. Did some gallivanting, met a streamer couple that washes, so that was fun. Went out for breakfast with my grandparents. And then we are also able to get a new YouTube video up. So yeah, it's been great. I hope that you've also been good. Looks so good. Yeah, so you've done nothing. <laughs> You do twine me, that's what I usually do too. Ooh, Scarlet. The one thing, yes, if you were gonna do it in the oven and papillot, but because of, we're doing it right over charcoal, we would light the paper on fire. So that's a, not an option for me, but like I said, if you're doing it in the oven, for sure. So let's cover this up. Put the other half on, then I'll get out some butcher's twine. Gotta wash up. Are we doing a big menu for Easter? Honestly, Mish, have still have not really talked about it. I guess we'll probably ask our friends that come pick up on Saturday if they have plans. And if they don't, then maybe we'll do some Easter takeout dinners. Yeah, parchment's good till 500, and then it just starts to disintegrate. <laughs> so 
So just enough string to go underneath and then around on the top. Probably lengths like that. And obviously it gets shorter as you go to the tail end. I think we'll do four. Four places where we tie it. And that way nothing, nothing should be moving around. Let us see. This is reminding me of how we uh, cut the cinnamon buns the other day. <laughs> so I'll just take your twine, loop it under the skin like that. Probably stay pretty close to the top here. There we go. And then we want to tie it tight, but not too tight that we start kind of digging into the fish. Does that make sense? We don't want to start tearing the flesh. So something like that looks good. We can do one more, not for good measure. Is this one gonna be long enough? Oh my gosh, just. Just. Yeah, one thing I've found in the past is if you go too tight when you're tying the fish this way, it'll dig into the flesh and then when it cooks, the flesh cooks in that shape and it's not the best. But it is important to get it semi-tight just so nothing really moves around when we're trying to flip it on the grill. One more. Get that piece of parsley in there. There we go, guys. That looks really nice. Must be really good at tying balloons. I think I would be really good as a balloon artist. <laughs> yeah, he's getting his corsage on. <laughs> and then we can just come back. I'll just trim up some of these longer ends just so they don't like burn up on the grill, I guess. That's where my imagination is going. And well, there's a lot of fat and stuff in salmon skin and fish skin in general. So I don't think I'm going to oil the outside. I don't think it's going to stick at all to the grill. Hi, Eugene, how are you doing? So that is that for the fish now. Done and done. And obviously you could totally do it with a bigger piece of fish too. Gonna take one more photo for myself now that it's closed up. It looks nice and clean from this side. Sweet. Okay, and now this is going to go into the fridge, friends. Actually, no, scratch that. It's gonna stay out because we're going to be heating up the grill momentarily here. Just gotta finish up one more task that we had to do, which was just cutting up this little bit of dill for our potatoes. And then we'll turn the pot of potatoes on, then we'll go outside 
light the fire on the grill, get the get the charcoal all good to go for our fish. And then I'm thinking cook time on this fish, 15 to 20 minutes, I would say. Nothing longer than that, because the filet is not thick enough for it to need any time longer than that. Perfect. Now you can put the dill in with the sliced green onion. And those just get mixed into the potato once we add the butter and the white wine vinegar. Give that another wipe. So far, we've really made minimal dishes for this menu today. All right, back into the fridge. And then if we look at our prep list, we can cross off the salmon. We seasoned it. We did parsley, dill, and lemon inside. We tied it up. Now we just gotta grill it. That's it. Just uh, taking a moment here, guys. The gimbal's all on its own. Oh, we needed the bottom piece. Oh. Wipe of the lens with the dish towel. Clean, clean, clean. Epoch Cam Pro. Look at that. Look at this madness. Oh, it's just charging on. That's, I see what's going on. goes in. Uh, not yet. Not yet? No, because it's going to go. I thought. Bung! Let's go that way first. Okay. okay. Should be good. Quick check. Chiggity check. We'll just go all the way outside probably. And then we're gonna use the Mini Max today. My fave. Oh, look, it's the Sammy Man. Go, go, go. Mm -hmm. 
do, 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 do. Look at this. It's springtime. Oh, there's a big robin. There's a big robin birdie over here. Commingling some items. And... Move this guy over. Up and over. Perfect. It's a pretty perfect view, I would say. We take the top off. Open this guy up. We open the bottom vent up. This is what we are gonna need coming up. That can go there. And now, put on our egg mitt. Take out the rack. Hummingbirds are fighting in their bush. <laughs> you can hear it. We're gonna stir up our old charcoal just to let any loose ash fall through the grate there. And I think we gotta do a quick vacuum as well. A quick vacuum, and then I gotta find some charcoal. Gotta find some charcoals too. What charcoal are we using? Okay, and for the vacuum, I just gotta hook it up to the front here. mean it doesn't matter I just we need to know where it is there's nothing left in the top bin okay hey I didn't know what was happening with bottom bin I'm not the barbecue master I'm just the helper okay guys I'm gonna mute you really quick because this is gonna be very loud Okay, should be back for audio. I don't know if that was actually good enough. So I just want to peek underneath here. <laughs> this thing is not the easiest to take apart. But it is important with what we're doing here. There we go. Okay, one more quick mute but you can see all the loose ash down there that we don't want to plug those air holes because then our charcoal won't be happy. should be good now that is so nice and clean this thing gets put at the front where our vent is make sure that lines up there we go that gets put back in thank you for that we got a raid as well. 
Thank you for the raid, tacked out. How was your stream today? Thank you for sharing your people with us. We're just uh, doing a bit of grill maintenance before we light this fire for ourselves today to cook our salmon on top of. Charcoal grilled salmon. Must have been another bin that he's talking about here. We both the other? Yes, okay. but I have this bin. Yep. What's this bin? If it's not the big be We're emptying the bins out. on my head <laughs> we'll try and do a mix of both small and bigger chunks of charcoal you get nice even heat that's why I didn't put the hose up guys he thought he was helping but really I did it so I didn't put ash everywhere Yeah. Too much in there or like get away on you. Such an ash head. Okay, I'll take a bit out then. Holy, a legit, a literal little log. <laughs> that, I think that's good if I just take out this one of their big chunk. And so now I'm gonna take out the bigger pieces and we'll start by lighting some of the smaller chunks because that'll go quicker. And then we can pile the bigger pieces of charcoal on top of that. Kind of like how we start a campfire. All right. <laughs> You're well, just another day of driving, delivering around upstate New York. Well, that's good. I'm glad everything went well. Do you have lots of deliveries? Okay, let's pop this baby. I don't know how this is going to light, so I'm gonna go on a different different piece. So our loof lighter right on top of our charcoal, touching it until it starts to spark and light up. Come in a little bit more. There you go. Maintenance complete. And it really doesn't take long, especially to get the Minimax set up. Mmm, I can smell it already. Yum. Yeah, it's not super warm outside here today, guys. There's a bit of a chill lingering in the air. Hello? Are we lighting? Is it working? I hear the crackling. Okay, I'm gonna move a piece here. Oh yeah, she's crackling. Okay, we'll keep going. We got crackles, and yeah, this charcoal smells a lot different than the last one we were using. There we go. We got sparks happening. As soon as you start to see a piece like glowing orange, you can bring the lighter away from the charcoal a bit.
And then once you have a nice little fire, yeah, this sh should be Jealous Devil then, Sam is saying. Nice hardwood charcoal. Once we have little flames poking up, we can stop that for a sec. And then like I said, we'll pile on a few of those bigger chunks and then get those lit. It's a nice big one too. So usually I pile up like this and then we'll give it another little blast of heat. Then we'll let that even out. And then because we're grilling right over the charcoal, is this fire's not gonna take very long before we're able to cook over it. So it's more about reading the coals, making sure you have a nice even bed so things cook evenly, rather than going by the temperature on the temperature gauge. But we'll kind of go by both things. And then we just wanna watch our vents as we're cooking keep the heat nice and even. Get that ripping both the other way as well. Looks great to me. Okay, so now we're gonna leave the top and the bottom fully open. Just gonna go wash my hands up. You guys hear the the charcoal? The way it's just crackling. I've got two little birdlies with me. Hello. Hello, how are you? Okay, we'll come and check this in like five minutes. Just do a quick wash up and we'll turn our potatoes on. Oh yeah. I know, it would be so nice, Quimby. Real quick, just wanted to show you guys. So now I'm gonna turn on our pot with the baby potatoes, cool water. We already seasoned it as well, so I'll do that onto medium high to get it going. I think it'll take about seven or eight minutes to bring that up to a boil and then we'll turn it down to a simmer. Total cook time for the potatoes, probably around 20 minutes. And it's totally okay if they're done a little bit early, like let's say half an hour early because they will keep their heat really well in there. And then the only other thing we're kind of watching is our Goldilocks and yeah, it's gonna be a bit. Might not be able to make the hot cross bundo together on stream. Maybe I'll have to take photos along the way like we did last time. Hey Lauren, how are you doing? Okay, let's go back outside for now. Put a spoon over by those potatoes. Tasty, tasty potatoes. And then a couple things for our salmon to grill. Probably need a pair of tongs and maybe a spatula. Uh, probably a spatula. 
And then I'll do a nice clean plate to be able to put our fish onto after it's cooked. There's that. You had a good week so far, Lauren? Just finishing up my last sips of tea and then I'll head back out there. And look, the sun is coming out, amazing. Okay, let's go stir this up. You have, yes, no complaints. Yeah, we've had a good week as well. A bit busier than usual, but we actually did some like socializing safely, which was nice. We ended up meeting with Officer Larva and Professor Mendel Bakes, another food and drink streamer. So we did that on Tuesday. We went for a nice cup of coffee with them and had good chats. They came into the city to look at all the cherry blossoms that are blooming. Okay, this is looking great, friends. So I just kind of stirred that up to get the charcoal evenly spread out and lit. I might give it one more blast of heat, though. But you can see how all the smaller pieces underneath light a lot quicker. Hello, Booba. Call the birdies here Boobas. I don't know why. <laughs> They're like my little pets almost. Okay, that's a really nice even bed. So one more kiss of the heat and probably 10, 15 minutes or so and we'll be cooking. chunks light up. We got a sparky bit back there, hey? She's a beaut. Proud of that fire. And I think that's how it should be when you're cooking with charcoal. Make a fire that you're proud of. <laughs> okay, now we're gonna start evening out the temp. Isn't it the best, BB Bubs? Like, I just love that leaf lighter. So now I'm gonna close this up. So we'll come back a little bit. Oh shit, hummingbird fight. <laughs> Close that baby. We'll pop the top on. We got a doggo coming out to see what's up. So for now, do bottom and top nice and open. We're still trying to light those coals, but we don't want them to get too, too hot because then it is a bit difficult to cool them down. Move this up. So that works. I can get a more centered view. Perfect. So yeah, you can just like slightly see a little bit of smoke coming out. Okay, once again, I'll just be right back, wash up my hands. We'll see if those potatoes are boiling yet.
and Arsenal Jose. Thank you for that follow. I'm sorry I missed you earlier. Okay, nothing quite yet in our potato pot, but it will be soon, that's for sure. Never know when grilling when to have the vents open. So let's let's have a chat about it, Lauren, since you say you don't know. Is the more air you allow to the fire, the higher heat you're gonna get. Cause then it's more fuel for it, right? So that's why we have both the top and bottom vent. Usually bottom vent, once the coals are hot, you can close down like at least half. <laughs> the dog just ripping on by. And then the top vent is mostly what I use to really control the temperature from there. But today, for example, how we're gonna grill, probably bottom and top, kind of half open. Don't wanna get the salmon skin too, too dark, but we definitely need enough heat to cook it through, right? And that's pretty much it. So yeah, kind of the key thing to remember is the more open your vents are, the hotter the fire you're gonna have. But the nice thing about the egg is like if your fire's ever out of control, you can just close down both the top and bottom vent and basically suffocate it and then you're good. And then you just like have to let it cool down and you can start over. So like they do have a nice little safety switch built in. Okay, I'm gonna bring my plate out with our utensils, get that set. And they'll also say like using the Minimax is nowhere near as daunting as using one of the bigger, big green eggs. <laughs> Minimax is just a little baby. Such a small fire. Okay, so looking at the temperature gauge here, it's already reading almost 500 F. So let's have a peek. Also, we got to burp it at this point. Yeah, that's looking really good. So now, close down the bottom half, close down the top. I'm gonna go more like only leaving it one third open. And then hopefully we're able to even this out to like around 350 to 400 Fahrenheit. Yeah, it's dropping a few degrees like every second, so that'll be good. So I'll let it simmer on down and then we'll put our grill grate on, burn that off a little bit. Then we can get our fish going, friends. And yeah, the fish I'm thinking should only take around 15 to 20 minutes. The fillets aren't too, too thick. So for example, we're already almost down to 450 F and we were like rocking at 500 and that's just by closing down the two vents. I'm also gonna give that eggy just a little, little wipe. It's got a good bit of pollen on it, and I want to take some photos. Worst part about spring: all of the pollen that just builds up on your cars and anything that you may have outside. Okay, perfect. Just popped a peek at our potatoes here. And they have come up to a boil. So now let's turn that down to low heat. Let those simmer out. Maybe I'll do a quick check to see where we're at cooking wise. At least another five minutes. 
What kind of salmon do you have to cook, Lauren? Okay, so we'll come back and check those in about five minutes from now. Let's go back out. Sam, are we out of the Traeger cleaner? Uh, whatever's left of that squeeze bottle. Where is that bottle at? Is it outside? There's a bit left. Success. So this is what I'm using. Just sprayed a bit of this and it works really good for cleaning the outside of the egg as well. Just a little wipey. Okay, now our fire is down to 400 or just below. So look at that, perfect with our vents, what we did. That helped clean it up a bit, didn't it? Okay, what we wanna do, give this a little burp. Oh yeah, those are looking nice now. Place our grate on. Let that burn off a touch. Is that looking nice and even how it's lit? I think so. Maybe I'll do one stir around real quick. It seems like some of these pieces are not as lit, like that one. Take this guy so we don't burn ourselves. Just pile it up a little bit more. get a little hotter because of their size they haven't fully lit and we don't want them to just go out oh you don't have the salmon yet yeah you gotta go to the store <laughs> okay that should be good so now we're okay Got this guy on we just gotta burn some of the bitlies off of there so we'll close it back up and then usually when we open this, it kind of falls back. So I'll even it back out as well. I will be right back. Hello, Double Tap. How are you doing today? Welcome in. One more wash up. I'll check the potatoes before I head out again. See where those guys are at. And yeah, that's why I said it's okay if the potatoes are done early so that, excuse me, you can focus on the salmon while you're grilling it. Yeah, I'm doing good, Double Tap. Thanks for asking. It's been a great little stream so far. Everything's working exactly how it should. Potatoes aren't quite ready yet. <laughs> Why are you yelling at me, King Russell? Give me some foods. What kind of food do you want? What is going on here? Okay, I'm coming out with the salmon. Do 
do do do do there it is in all of its glory okay fire has gone down a bit in temp it's gonna open the bottom grate a bit open this guy up as well Grab our brush. Little burp seed. <laughs> Language. Language, please. Before this grate gets too hot. because it usually comes in and is actually like quite polite <laughs> not this time okay we're getting the good view in here guys good good views look at that just kind of smoking so now we're gonna take this beauty and I think I want to put it this way yeah I think I want to put it on this way to the grill to start and then we can't move it as soon as we pop it on because it kind of wants to stick right away. But that's okay. Because kind of our telltale sign of being able to flip it is when it doesn't stick anymore. Yeah, no tolerance policy. It's true, it's true, Bonk. And Benji, hello, how are you doing? I'm also gonna close this up. I'm gonna close this lid for a few moments just to get some even heat through go back to single single view and then I'm just gonna take this sheet pan inside now because we're not gonna be using it anymore and we'll wash up our hands yeah it's such a cute little salmon that we stuffed cutest little coho ever and are you guys salmon skin people like when you eat the skin because i'm not really a salmon skin person i usually just cook it on the skin side and then peel off the skin and discard it All I'm doing with the potatoes, guys, I'm just gonna turn off the heat, pop the lid on, just let them stay hot in that water for a few moments. You love yourself with some salmon skin bonk? I think if you're able to like perfectly crisp it without it getting too like burnt, I'm okay with that. But usually I find it just kind of tastes burnt and not that good. Okay, we're chilling like right below 350 here, temp wise. Creeping up a bit. So I'll close the bottom just a touch. That seemed to do it. Thank you, Benji. Yeah, we love our barbecues. Care Bears, you've never eaten the skin. Then again, you've never bought salmon with skin on it. Whoa, that's crazy. It keeps so much like flavor and all of the juices inside of the fish when you cook it with the skin on, rather than if you just have the filet. Okay, let's uh, have a peek here. Smell some browning bits. I think it's just the herbs though. That's looking amazing. Like really, really good so far. Okay, let's close it back up. If you're looking, you ain't cooking. That's a big thing with people that cook with fire. 
Because every time you disturb the fire, it's gonna cook different, right? Always cook it with it on, but usually you also eat around it unless it's perfectly cooked, fact. Kame's okay, always wondered, did you folks fabricate the nest for the two big green eggs? We did, Kame. So my dad and Sam built this table. It's all cedar. And yeah, they built it when we got the extra large. And yeah, the sad thing kind of is that we're gonna be getting rid of this table pretty soon. Cause we're going all to stainless steel. So that it's all food safe inside of the truck. Yeah, Care Bears, I really urge you to try Try cooking your salmon with the skin on and see if you find a difference. Okay, just closing down the top a bit more. We're still, we're just at three, 360 now. Remember I said anywhere between 350 Fahrenheit and 400 should be good. I think we'll chill here until it's time to flip it over. And then we'll quickly go inside, dress up our potatoes, and, that, and by that point, we'll be able to take the salmon off. That's kind of how I'm thinking things are gonna go. And yeah, as much as we wanna cook over charcoal with the lid up, if you cook it with the lid up, well then you're gonna have like constant fuel to your fire and then you won't control the heat of it. You'll just have really high heat and you'll be burning stuff. And then also keep in mind like, we still have to flip this before the one side is completely cooked. It seems like it's cooking very quick. So I'm gonna go for a flip. Let's come in again. Take my fish spatula. Beautiful, it's also not sticking anymore. So I'm just gonna move it over to the side this way a bit and then we'll flip towards you guys. Nice and gentle. And then quickly just place it right back in the middle. But yeah, look at that. Look at how awesome that's looking. Okay, close it back up. Close the lid again, and now let's pop back inside. I'm just gonna leave that view on for a moment. Go, go, go. Let's go over to the stove top. <laughs> Looks like you just trying to get it. Oh, to bed in the morning? Thanks, BB Bubs. It's pretty easy flip on that salmon once it's all like tied together. So now all I'm gonna do is strain out the water from these potatoes. I already checked them earlier and they were cooked through. You can kind of see how the skin's just starting to come off. It's a bit hot. And yeah, we'll just mix everything together in this pot. Start with our butter. A couple tablespoons of that. And we left it out on the counter so it would soften up a bit and be able to melt right into the potatoes. Got my spoon right here. And yeah, I'm okay if the potatoes fall apart just a touch. I find they really absorb the flavor if you cook them to this point. Get like a nice coating of the butter on. Okay, next up, is I'm doing like a little bit of a vegetable stock base. It's called Talifix, it's a European thing. 
guess I will shake it from the other side so I don't get lumps. So it's basically like salt with pulverized dried vegetables in it. Really good umami flavor, I would say. And then just to even out the fat from the butter and the potatoes, ah, is just a few drops of white wine vin for balancing. Let's taste this now, see how we did. And like this butter that we get at the bottom of the pot here, you can always just like drizzle that over the salmon when we plate it. Mmm, smells so good. Look at how that just coated that though. Have a taste. Mm hmm. That's perfect for me, guys. It's like buttery, just a hint of the white wine vinegar. Doesn't stay on your palate though. And then the tail effects, just enough to season through. So now I don't need any extra salt. The only thing that we haven't put in there yet is our fresh chopped scallion and dill. And I'm just waiting for that until the end so that they can stay nice and bright and green and they're nice fresh flavor too. Let's pop back out and see how our fish is doing. Pasha's is always interested. She's the best helper. She's the best. Okay, we're at four hundo. I'm gonna say we're probably good. Just uh, kind of going by the fat coming out of the salmon. on this side. Just trying to peek inside as well. Maybe a touch longer on this one side. And we do also know that this center part here, like this section is gonna take the longest to cook through. Yeah, let's do like maybe 30 seconds and then I think we're good to take it off. And then we'll let it rest for a few moments too while we're plating up and that'll be the last thing we put on the plate. Nom, nom, nom. Didn't end up uh, needing these tongs at all. Lovely. Okay. Again. I mean, we could also do a little swivel around. Do something like this. Make it go that way. Yeah, I think we're good, guys. Yum. Okay, now all we do, close it up. Close the bottom vent. Take the top off. So I closed the bottom, took off the regulator lid and we popped this one on top and that's it. So we just suff suffocate the fire to shut it down. And this is how our fish turned out. Like, look at that view. Yum. Looks tasty. I'm just gonna go grab the iPad really quick. 
and a tripod, and then we'll plate it up. We'll plate it, plate it up. Doggo. Doggo, stop it. Stop scratching. Oh yeah, oh yeah guys, I found out that Doggo has Cushing's disease. Doggo has Cushing's disease, which I don't know if that's like super bad for dogs. Thank you for that, Sam. But I mean, she's doing good regardless of her age. She's a-okay. All right, maybe the first things that we can do is just clip, clip our, our string so that's easy to take this apart. It smells really nummy. There's that, I'm just gonna pop that up there for now. And then, Potatoes look so freaking good. It's like my favorite way to do potatoes. Bring our potatoes over with our fresh herbs. Dump those in. Yum, just the smell when the dill hits the heat of the potato. And it also adds a really nice color contrast to the potatoes too. And then see how that just completely coats it now? So that's exactly what we want to happen. And that was just butter, a little bit of white wine vinegar, herbs, and some seasoning. Let's keep that hot on the stove top. And then we'll just grab our salad ingredients out. And we'll plate up. There we go. Our green olive dressing. Dog was like, what is going on here, Kate? <laughs> She's like, salad, I'm here for the fish. So we have our nicely washed, just some green head lettuce. So we'll do a nice pile of that onto the plate and we'll build everything else around it. I'll also say like salad is how we can build height on a plate. So if you stack it properly, you should be able to pile it relatively high. Beauty. What up, Blondie? How are you doing today? Oh yeah, like, like I said, Double Tap is she's been with, alongside of me, living up life for like 13 years already, right? So we spend lots of time together. She knows where to be. She knows what's happening. That'll be it for the tomato on the salad. And then see how the salad ingredients kind of weigh down the lettuce as well. Gotta strategically place this. That looks good. I don't love when stuff touches the rim of the plate either though. That's, that's a big no-no in the culinary world. There we go. And then this. Yeah, I hunger. This dressing, like look at that. It almost looks like a tapenade or something. Yeah. It's so good, Sam. I am so happy that I made that big jar. I think it would also be good. Like if we just took this, mixed it in with the boiled potatoes before we dressed it with butter and stuff. Yeah. Like I don't know if this is 
well, it's Italian as far as Maddie says. It kind of gives me French vibes too. And then this just gets kind of dropped on top. I think it looks really nice if you just lay it over top of the lettuce. I don't really want it on top of the tomato. Tomatoes in all of their nice fresh red glory. Something like that. And yeah, just like the thickness of it. Just coats stuff so nice. Basically a tapenade dressing. Hey, baked and laid, thank you. Yeah, the tomato placement, look at it. Okay, now I'm gonna bring the potatoes in. Nice scoop of that. It almost like melds in with the salad. also burnt too oh yeah look at that as I'm pulling the string off the skin's coming off too so now we got the strings off the top layer should be able to just pull this uh, skin right off the top piece there might have to do it in a couple couple different pieces just because of the size of this and also just watching where it's peeling so that we don't remove too much of the nice flesh. But this is really satisfying to me when we get to this point. I also like made the olive dressing with this salmon in mind because I also think it would be good eaten with the fish. There's that. Just take this. Look at that opened up. Yeah, I'm happy that it, I took it off when I did. So it looks like this nice thick part here didn't get overcooked. It's firm, but it's not like well, well done. Or you saw the back part definitely was, right? So yeah, all we do is take off the herbs. Sam, you want me to take off from yours too? I'm okay right now. Okay, he's okay right now. And then you have a choice. You can serve it this way, like season side up. Like look at the juice in there still. And then I also know like a sign for me when salmon's starting to cook is like the little white bits that start coming out. So that's like the fat that's starting to cook. Or you can choose to prepare it or serve it like that side. But I think this side looks really nice. And then also see like, that's why I said to not tie it too tight because it will hold the shape. Only other way to break that down, I'm just gonna use my fish spatula that I had earlier. I'm just gonna rinse off some of the char. So it's kind of hard to cut it. Yeah, the lemon. So yeah, I'll just kind of cut it there. And like the pieces are quite small, so I think I'm just gonna layer both of these on to the plate. Kind of just stacked on top of each other. How do I want this to happen? Maybe like that. There we go. It smelled super good when I opened up. 
that one piece of salmon from the bottom one, like all you could smell was the lemon and herbs. There's that. I think one other thing, I usually just like to do a drizzle of olive oil on top of the salmon. Could also do butter too. And then it just gives it like a little bit of sheen if you feel like it's missing that. I use a higher end olive oil for that, so like single, single origin. And yeah, other than that, I don't think we need anything else on here. I'm really happy with how everything turned out. Just gotta let the dog out, she's being a butt. Stop scritching, ya papa. Time for your afternoon nap. think for photo it looks good guys thank you I really appreciate that I feel like it doesn't look that amazing some of the colors are like blah but at the same time it looks like I cannot wait to eat it let's just say that do this do kind of that in the background I think Ringer, definitely on. There, a little photo from each side of the plate. I think that's perfect. All right, let's see how we did. You need to move next door, take the string off. I had it on portrait mode, Anavar, so it didn't like focus on those strings. It's just in the background part of the photo there. <laughs> and thanks, sensitivity. Okay, I think most important part here is the fish. And then remember I said that there was some pin bones in it. They were just so small. That I didn't want to tear up the fish at all. Mmm. I love how much the salmon absorbs the charcoal flavor. I'm gonna take a nice nugget from this side. Like look how it just flakes apart. And then the outside bits got kind of crispy. Mm, I got a bone. But yeah, there's still juice like just pouring out of this. You can kind of see where those pin bones are. But like this piece, if I hold that up, yum. Yum indeed. Thank you, D-Bird. And Leaster Brandon 9 thank you for the follow. Let's try that. Mmm. That olive oil on there, plus the like perfectly seasoned salmon, just melts in your mouth. Those potatoes are money. Definite like springtime vibes. There's a couple in Moon Creek right now that are Italian. They have 130,000. Holy. <laughs> you like the ASMR baked and laid? Thank you. Okay, let's try our salad. Try the salmon with the salad as well. But I'm so intrigued by this dressing. some good bits in here. I think first bite we'll do without the tomato. First bite, 
no tomato. Yeah, nice and tasty and also like quite healthy, I would say. Usually when it becomes warmer outside, I start cooking a little bit more healthy for us. <laughs> Here's you making salmon for lunch. Open can from the grocery. Try not to judge yourself. There's nothing wrong with canned salmon. Mmm. That's so yum. Totally like tap and nod vibes from that dressing. It's like buttery, acidic. You just get the little bit of red onion and garlic on the back of your palate. Mm-hmm. I'm going for that piece too. Yum. <laughs> Don't really need the potatoes, but I would be sad if they weren't there. But just the salmon with this salad, I knew it was gonna be good with the dressing, but it's so good, guys. Seriously got to try making that one for yourself. We made a big jar. What wine would I serve with this dish? Definitely lean towards either a white or even a rosé. You could push it to that because of the salmon. And I would go nothing too, too sweet. Because a lot of these flavors are quite delicate. Like there's not too many strong flavors going on here. So you just want it to really complement everything. I find Pinot Grigios are usually pretty balanced as far as white wine goes and it's the one I also cook with. I just love buttered potatoes so much, guys. <laughs> so, so numb. Okay, I'm gonna take a very quick bathroom break. I will be right back, hold tight. Okay, 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 I'm back. All right, guys, I think I'm gonna have a few more bites because it is seriously that good. And then we're actually wrapping things up today. I thought that my starter would be a bit more active by this time, but she's like just at the top part of this now compared to where we fed her at the beginning of the stream. So I'll have to just take a little video when I mix up that dough later today. Do a white. Yeah, even a lighter red, that would be okay, Bonk. I said definitely go with a white or even a rosé if you needed. There's my uh, belch of approval, Cammy. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, must resist the hunger induced. I made it, I made it too healthy. It shouldn't have made you too, too hungry today. 
<laughs> save your appetite for dinner and send how are you but yeah i'm very happy like this is a dish that i came up with on my own so when we make these dishes especially if it's the first time we never really know how things are gonna taste together but we can imagine it but everything tastes so good together here Like a bite of salmon and then salad. Mmm, so good. And some potato. Mmm, deadly. And guys, I don't even know if the salmon took the full 15 20 minutes on the grill, thinking back to it now. You're feeling good? You make a cook live today too? Like you streamed is what you're saying? Yeah, I'm doing really great. Thanks for asking. We had a nice, a simple and like pretty short stream, I would say. Typically we go a bit longer. I'm just looking for someone for us to go raid. Do we want to go wish? LA a happy birthday today or do we want to do live stream IRL shopping with Tabatai cooking but not like mine that's okay everyone is like their own power right thank you Nat you thank you Natsu yeah so we're gonna go raid the hunger service it's his birthday today I don't know what he's making. He just says, can I get an, oh yeah, I see pineapples on the stove top here. Okay, this has gotta be fun. This has gotta be fun. You cooked a famous dessert from Brazil called Brigadeiro. Yeah, time for work bonk. Isn't this a rare occurrence? We're finished, like I'm finishing when you're going to work? Crazy. Well, I hope you have a wonderful day at work as well, bonk. Obviously try not to work too hard and stay safe wherever you're going. Yep, see you tomorrow. Okay, should be good to go here. Boop, got it all set up. Okay, so tomorrow, really fun stream we are doing some kind of traditional mexican food let's say pozole so we're going to be making a red pork pozole with all of the accompaniments sour cream avocado cabbage radish on top as well as homemade hot cross buns with our sourdough starter there so stay tuned in discord later today because i'll be updating how those go and then as well tomorrow, we'll be mixing up our pizza dough for Saturday's stream. Big pizza stream, 10 pizzas being made that day. It's gonna be crazy. Yeah, avo. So yeah, pozole is basically like a pork or Mexican soup. You can do pork, you can do chicken, whatever you want in it, but it's one of my faves. All right, friends, let's go see what LA is up to. Wish him a happy birthday if you make it into there. And I hope you guys have a great rest of your day, night, wherever you're at. And as always, if you need anything, go give us a follow on Discord or join the channel. We're always around to answer your questions. Okay, I'm gonna hit that button, friends. Thank you for all the love today as well. The biddies, the new follows. And we'll see you tomorrow, 11 a.m. Pacific. Bye!